This is not just some gangster film. It makes us look like a joke, and that's bad for business. This is a story about family. It's Shakespeare. The agencies won't touch us. It's epic. You want to be a producer? Bang, borrow, steal, do whatever it takes. Gangster movies are dead. We will snuff out the hatred. If I say I'm going to handle something, I'm going to handle it. And the prejudice. It. You're still going to try to make this thing? Sinatra wants us to shut the picture down. You got brains, and you got balls. Try using balls. Rick Hong here for Hollywood First Look. Tonight, we are at the premiere for The Offer, which is about the making of The Godfather. Let's take a first look. Well, so how was it playing Andrew Eastman? I mean, that's legendary to say, wow, I get to be the casting director of the person of The Godfather. Yeah, I tried to not put too much pressure on it. Um, <laughs> it was kind of nice that I didn't know, like, how she acted. In re you know, there wasn't any, like, videos that I could find of her. So it was nice that I could just keep it um, closer to me or, you know, make it as fun as I could and just, you know, make it... She seemed like a cool lady. So I was just like, I'm just going to play it as cool as possible. <laughs> She's a ball of fun. How did, you, how did you like playing a congressman back in the 70s? And this is a guy that wasn't a big fan of wanting the movie made. No, no, he was not. He would uh, use whatever influence he had to uh, stop it. Unfortunately, his influence ran out. You know what I noticed when I was watching, what I thought was amazing, is that not only is the congressman Italian, and then your opposite Joe Colombo, who is Giovanni Ribisi, mm -hmm. you're both Italian too. And I, I, I caught that later on. I was like, wait, oh yeah, we got two Italian actors op like w acting opposite that. So like, how did you like having your scenes with Giovanni? Oh, he's the best. Oh, he's great. You basically just latch on to Giovanni and hang on, and wherever that scene goes, it's going. How intimidating is it playing Ali McGraw? I know, it's very intimidating. She is a style icon. In fact, before I, before I got cast in this part, I had pictures of her in my phone because I just, I love the way she styles herself. I think there's some incredible iconic photos of her from the 70s that I love. So getting to be her uh, was overwhelming and to me the highest compliment, the highest version of a compliment. So. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty overwhelming at first, but she's such a grounded, intelligent, thoughtful, um, emotionally available person. And in her autobiography, she writes so beautifully about herself. And I feel like that shines through in all, in all the canon of her work. Um, so diving into uh, living inside of her really actually, it made me feel really sharp. It made me feel really emotionally available. So that being overwhelmed quickly translated into wanting very much to do justice to a person who I really respect. Is there one, like, like part of the script, like in the scripts that you've directed where you're like, I cannot wait to do this scene? I was very excited. Uh, well, there were a number of scenes in this that I was very excited to get to sink my teeth into. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, meeting, everybody meeting Marlon Brando uh -huh. for the first time was a, a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, all of the work in Sicily was was a great deal of fun, and we originally thought we were going to go to Sicily to shoot it all, and uh, and ended up because of COVID and a number of other things uh, having to find a way to do that here, and it was very challenging. But uh, but part of the satisfaction of it was feeling like we really pulled that off. It was great because you know I come from Brooklyn, I grew up in the you know in the 50s, 60s, 70s. So when I put the outfit on to film this uh, series. It brought back memories that my friend talked about the Godfather, you know, you hear stories about the mafia, especially in my neighborhood we had the Italian parade, all coming back, all these memories, and especially that I'm part of it, because back then, you know, they were talking about the whole movie, how great it was, and then a little 50 years later, I'm you know, part of the making of the Godfather, which is exciting. I hope these friends of mine are still alive, they get a chance to see it. You know, there's that fun scene, you know, like, it's like Luca Brasi himself, because that pivotal scene in The Godfather, you get to recreate it in the offer. So did you watch that scene a bunch of times, or did you say like, no, 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 let me just like trust the directors and the, and the script to do it? It's a combination of both, because I remember that was embedded in my brain when I've seen The Godfather the first time. I brought with the best of me to bring, uh, to emulate him and everything, because he showed out pretty uh, well in the beginning. How was it playing Mario Puzo? It was amazing. It was a gift. It was like it was an absolute dream uh, as an actor to play. You know, I think the great thing is when you get to play a great artist as an actor. Um, I'm not a genius. He was a genius. I got to pretend to be a genius, and that was pretty amazing. And it was amazing. It was like a real. I knew it was a unique uh, character and and human to portray. 
was there old footage of him that you watched to kind of get inspiration of being like, okay, this is how he acted? Or did you just have other conversations with other people to say like, how was his personality? Um, yeah, there was some footage. It's not a ton, not like there is a Francis, um, but there is some, and you get a lot. You know that he did. You could just a couple of frames of footage of Puzo, and, and he told such a story with him himself physically. Um, so you know, uh, but yeah, there was some footage and interviews. Charlie Rose transcripts that I read, his books, which were really the roadmap. Um, you know, is to find his spirit. You know, the great artist. And I thought if I could just get those into my soul. Um, how no matter what I said in the script, hopefully would kind of come through those dynamics and, and, and pay homage to him, you know. So I tried my best, and I hope that it came through. You can find The Offer streaming on Paramount Plus now. Until next time, I'm Rick Hong.